Hi everyone, just wanted to uh, give you an update as to where we are so far this week in regards to the, uh, the renovation work that we said in our last video we planned this week. So we've got the fairway verti draining machine in that came in Monday morning. Uh, we've begun work yesterday. We started on the 15th in the jockey field to just try and shine the time up, times up. We felt we were getting a little bit of pluck in there, so obviously as the times were coming out, it was just pulling a little bit, so we decided to just back off of the jockey field and come out into the common. We've started here on the 11th, and um, as you can see, we've done about five to six strips. It was going very fairly cleanly, but again, we're getting a bit of pluck in, and what we've had to do is bring it out of the ground. So normally we'd expect to get the verti drain in around 200 to 250 millimeters, We've had to come right out to about 125, 150 millimetres. And even at this depth, there is very much a high level of compaction. Obviously, with what we've done on the fairways in back end of 22 uh, to early part of this year, we've obviously overseeded uh, and we've obviously done, as we say previous to that, the double scarify. So what this has meant is that we've had to back off in terms of aeration because of that good work that's been done to try and get these fairways back to get some coverage. So we've not done any slitting and any verti drain up until now. So what that has left us with is quite a, a high level of compaction in the fairways. And it means we've had to kind of come right out with our verti drain tines. And also what it's mean is it is a little disruptive and more than we expected actually. Uh, so what we've done is we've done five to six strips. The disruption for us was a bit too much and we've had to back off a bit. Uh, and what we're gonna do, we've got a little bit of a, a breakdown at the moment with the verti drain. We're going to get that repaired and we're going to come back probably continue in the jockey field there where we're not making as much disruption really shine those tines up as well as we can and bring it out and then we'll return hopefully out here even if we can get it in 100 125 mil we're going to be doing some kind of good we're going to be getting that water down which is what we want uh, what we don't want to do is do nothing leave it a year back off completely and we make the issue a lot worse for next season so we've got to weigh it up what we have done, being uh, proactive as we are, is we've come straight out, we've cleaned up this area that's been done as best as possible. As you'll see from the video Ollie's doing, we have sanded the worst area. The area which is towards the level of tea, which is a really narrow corridor, heavy compaction where we've created a bit of disturbance here. We've heavily sanded this, which will come back fine and it'll help dry that area out because obviously as the vert drain is going down and going along there is a huge amount of moisture coming up where it's just not being able to penetrate further down to that compaction and of course because of the frost you know that's poured over the last week that's now obviously a lot of moisture comes to the surface so a bit of disruption but just you know we're on it obviously and we will continue to monitor each fair as we go if we do feel the disruption is going to be that bad and we can't do the fairways out here, we will back off completely and we will look to something like slitting. Um, but at the moment, we just wanted to give you a good update and just keep you informed of the plan so far. And we just want to go on now to give you an update on where we are with greens. So finally, the weather is on our side, the frost has thawed, and we're able to get back onto these greens. We've given them a cut, the first cut probably in about three weeks now. Uh, and we've come along and what we've done is we've verti drained with a 13 millimetre tine. We've got down at a really good depth. We're probably down at about 200 millimetres, which is really nice. Nice 50 mil spacing, so it's nice and neat. Minimal disturbance, no heat. And then we've gone across with a nice light sand dressing on the entire green and the approach. We'll return to the approaches once we've aerated the greens, which we'll obviously put a larger tine on to do the approaches. Um, so it's a night and then obviously all that is followed up with a nice roll base to work the sand and just smooth off the surface afterwards, remove any tyre marks and they're feeling nice and firm underfoot and hopefully they're going to play nice and true. And the only other thing I wanted to bring to your attention which for me has been an ongoing thing in my time with the club and will be an ongoing thing in the future is just what the trees do to the green. So this oak tree is a beautiful feature of this hole. We can't, uh, I can't say anything about that and obviously a lot of members would hate to ever see that tree go but we just want to make you aware that that tree is four meters from the edge of that green and what that means is there's a root system from that tree and even the oaks behind ollie there that go right underneath the back of this green so the issues that that causes us is in the summer we struggle to keep these areas moist and keep good moisture content because the roots are going to be constantly constantly drawing out water so that means that the roots are just shriveling up and obviously we cut very tightly here at Harpen Common so our roots are already quite quite shallow and obviously with areas like this with those roots constantly going under there 
we can't get the grass roots down. So when we do any type of aeration, whether it be with a spiker, a verti drainer, even a slitter, we have lift, okay? So these areas here, which myself and Ollie come and repaired yesterday, which we've repaired you know, now for the last 10 years, every single year, the same thing. We've repaired them nice and neatly uh, because the machine just got slightly to that edge of the green and instantly it lifts up like the carpet. And the only way, unfortunately, that we're ever gonna get those roots down and we're ever gonna improve greens like this is to deal with the trees. Now, obviously we can do things like root prune, which we've kind of said to the council about before. They would rather actually see the trees removed rather than disturbing roots because it makes the trees unstable when you do any type of root pruning. So obviously the long-term basically message here is that these trees do need to, we need to start looking at how we can potentially replant and remove trees. Um, and I know it's a touchy subject and I'm not saying that we're going to do anything to these trees now because we're not uh, short term, long term, but it is the message that we have to get across because ultimately this green is being destroyed by these trees and obviously you know in, in the summer there's a huge issue with shade and us getting enough light onto these greens so we just wanted to give you that kind of message and get you thinking really as we have you know how difficult it is for us to manage the level green the second green the fourth green all of these greens that have trees within such close proximity um, and obviously you know if you see this type of damage you'll understand why and how this occurs um, and it's just for us to continue to nuisance uh, really um, but it's something we want to bring to your attention and hopefully you know one day we can get this this issue properly resolved all right guys just a quick one to finish on the club have invested in a lot of the staff members to undertake first aid training with a lot of us doing one day courses and then five of us doing full three day courses it's absolutely crucial that the staff invests in this sort of training so we can keep everyone safe who uses our facilities here at the common